Oh boy, where do I even begin with this one? I try to come forward with the very best furry comics I can find, but I was really on the fence about telling you guys about this one for a very, very long time. This is Jack, a webcomic series. It is complete, so you can read it from start to finish, and it is breathtakingly long. I'm going to warn you, here and now, this is going to be a stomach-churning sort of experience, much in the same way that Berserk is. This is triple X and not in a fun, sexy way. I'm just going to jump into it, so brace for this. This comic starts with a coat hanger abortion, and quite frankly, that is the least of your worries. If you're the kind of person that needs a trigger warning for this, that, or another, turn back now, because all the trigger warnings will go into this. Put on some headphones, watch this video alone. I'm not joking. Jack, our title character, is the Grim Reaper and the Sin of Wrath, one of the primary denizens of Hell. He's a wizened, kind green rabbit that spends his time collecting the recently dead and taking them to judgment, though most of the characters we run into are hellbound and he treats them like the garbage that they are. One of the first that we're introduced to is Brian, a school shooter who ends up dead at the end of his rampage and is very explicitly shown being taken to hell and mounted up for torture. The landscape of hell is entirely nebulous, full of pitfalls, trickery, and visceral torture. This is a real fire and brimstone kind of place, and nothing is censored. Like stomach churning, organs out, cheeks ripped off gore that I cannot show you here on YouTube. Everyone in hell has dots for eyes, symbolizing their status as a dead sinner. A very scattered few seek atonement, but even realizing that it's possible falls on deaf ears most of the time. These people deserve to be here, and most of them are too proud or too angry to ever escape. Our coat hanger abortion child, later named Fnar, for no apparent reason, Fnar, wanders the landscape of hell to visit its various victims. Hell has no effect on him, and he honestly doesn't react to all of the horrors around him because he just doesn't know any better. He talks with people, asks them questions, and has a growing uh, uncle and nephew relationship with Jack, but ultimately he wanders aimlessly like the child he is. He doesn't understand things like hunger or lust or sin. He was never born, after all. And yes, he does meet his mother in hell, and it's just as horrific as you might expect. With our title characters and setting laid down, Jack sort of dissolves into a, a loose narrative that is mostly an anthology spanning dozens of characters and their various reasons for being in hell or the reasons that they're not able to get out of hell. There are a few major characters like the Seven Deadly Sins, the worst sinners of them all, they're not the leaders in the underworld of hell, but unlike many of the other victims, they do have substantial power to torment others. Jack, as I mentioned, is the sin of wrath. While he does function as the Grim Reaper traveling to Earth and the Halls of Judgment to deposit souls, he is also the reason that the apocalypse happened, because a group of people wronged him and what is mass genocide if not a sin of wrath. The only problem is, Jack cannot seek atonement and leave hell, because he cannot remember specifically what he has done or why. Hell will not let him go, because what he has done is so terrible that there is no chance for him to seek atonement without his memories. You can't ask for forgiveness if you don't know what you've done. 
There's also Drip, the sin of lust and the author's self-insert. Drip was a serial killer and rapist on Earth who led a terrible life of abuse, incest, murder, torture, and more that carved up his soul into a monstrous form. When he finally died, hell made him into the sin of lust. His curse is that his cock changes its shape and size every day, and he can only get off if someone comes to him willingly. As you might imagine, this turns him into a sort of contract devil that spends his time making deals and swapping favors for favors. And yes, it is just as gross as it sounds. Oh, he can still get an erection and torment others, that is his function in hell, but he can't complete the act unless his partner says he can. And this is not displayed in any sort of erotic way, it's gross and gory like the rest of the comic. Jack and Drip spend much of the vast pages of the comic clashing with one another in a landscape of miserable, tortured furries that either don't understand or refuse to chase atonement. Such is the nature of the sinner, self-righteousness. Most of them don't think they're in the wrong, so they can't be saved. Only a couple of characters ever fix their dot eyes and achieve atonement. And even then, who's to say that hell itself will let you go? It won't. While characters like Fanar are innocent and hell cannot harm them, fixing your eyes and getting atonement does not mean that hell will just open its gates and allow you to go to heaven. You need an angel for that. Angels in this comic appear pretty frequently as little glimpses of the other side of the coin. They often arrive in hell to try and help others or spout exposition about the machinations of heaven and hell with mixed results. Hell's denizens hate angels. Even the sinners go out of their way to screw them over when they can, resulting in further torment and casualties. I know I'm repeating myself, but 99% of these people cannot be helped, and they will never escape this brutal landscape. I can't remember if the angels ever come to collect Fanar, as he is an innocent, but there's plenty of interaction. Why they would leave an innocent, unborn soul in hell is a spoiler that I can't tell you. This comic runs on a loose set of vaguely Catholic rules, but Fanar was killed before he was born, so he sort of falls in the cracks of a lot of that theology. That aside, Jack is very much an anthology series where time means nothing. The landscape and the circumstances are ever-changing, and the damned of hell takes center stage. Sometimes we can go dozens of pages without seeing our title character, even hundreds of pages. The series focuses very heavily on who is in hell and why. We see one guy who constantly defends himself, saying that the devil made him do it and he's not responsible for his actions. We see one guy who kills himself because he's living with survivor's guilt, and that goes about as well as you might think. The comic is a tattered, bloody tapestry of body parts, gore, and blasphemy. There's really not a timeline to follow, as, like I said, time has no meaning in hell. And though we visit Earth pretty frequently, that also jumps back and forth from the dawn of the furry age to the post-apocalyptic age. I would honestly be interested in reading this comic again in some sort of chronological order, as some events clearly take place before and after others, but that would require several read-throughs, and I honestly don't think I could stomach it. Title character Jack's origins are eventually hinted at and partially explained, but with the comic's vast number of pages, there is simply too much for me to arrange in any sort of chronological way. I'm sure someone smarter than me could do it if they really went for it. 
Now, we mentioned angels and heaven. We should talk a bit about that. While probably three quarters of the comic takes place in hell or on earth, there are plenty of shorts and side stories that take place in heaven and even purgatory. Purgatory is depicted as a sort of bland, suburban neighborhood where you can stay as long as you want, and it's fine. But if you ever want to get into heaven, you have to be reborn on earth, have a harder second life, and earn your way up. The idea of a harder second life actually keeps some characters from returning to earth and trying again, because there's always the chance that you could screw up and end up in hell forever. Heaven is depicted only in glimpses and varies pretty wildly, as it's big enough for everyone to have their own world. Some characters get there, most do not, and the angel characters spend plenty of time telling others about how great it is and how worth it it will be if they can get there. Again, not the focus of the comic, but there's a lot of time spent with angels encouraging others, fighting for lost souls, and trying to make sure that they have the best chance they can to get into heaven. It's a difficult process, and in the comic's long, long run, there's not many that make it. But the struggle to get there is a fascinating read based on the rules given. In conclusion, I would say only read Jack if you have a very, very high tolerance for body horror and gore. It is an older furry comic, and it shows its age in its art style and character designs, but in its heyday, it was very, very influential. Jack the Grim Reaper has actually appeared in many, many furry comics, you might recognize him if you're old enough, and for a long time he was recognized as the furry fandom's quote-unquote official Grim Reaper. This comic was very popular when it was still running a long time ago. Just make sure no one can read this over your shoulder. There is so much nudity, gore, torture, and more in this comic that just about anyone that catches you reading it is going to have a lot of questions, and chances are you won't be able to answer them because of how nebulous the comic's lore can be. You're only going to get a slightly clear picture of what this comic's really about hundreds of pages from its beginning. Also, you might have some trouble finding it, as the original website has been taken down, but this is the internet, after all. Enough searching around and you're bound to find it archived somewhere. Just be ready for a long, long read. It is exhausting, and it may leave you with a sense of melancholy, dread, or even an existential crisis. This comic ran for several decades. It is not short, and it takes its sweet, sweet time showing you everything that this version of the furry afterlife has to offer. Approach with caution. But please understand, this is probably one of the greatest furry comics ever written. See you later.